When I first started to learn how to cook, there's no one to teach me how to cook. I have to learn it on my own. That was four decades ago, so that was a long time. And during that time, there is no video to watch on YouTube because YouTube didn't start until 2005. So that's 15 years ago. So I really started cooking when I started working. Se seriously cooking is when I started working and living in Australia. So that was in 1993. And I started collecting during that time cooking books. And, but the thing with cooking books, it's not easy to learn because it's almost like reading a book. It's like reading theory. And there's no practical lessons. So you have to try it. I have to try it, try and errors, make a lot of mistakes. And sometimes the food turns out pretty bad, but it's still food and it fills the stomach. So I still ate it. Um, but I haven't used cooking book for a very long time, uh, ever since I know how to cook myself. The reason I'm saying all this is that there is one cooking book that I want to share with you that I have used many, many years ago, and I have made one recipe that I'm gonna do it again today. So today's cooking itself is inspired by this recipe in this cooking book. Some of you may know this cooking book. It was first published in 1999. This is probably one of my favorite cooking book, Chinese cooking book. And the book is called The Chinese Kitchen. It's written by a very famous scholar and author. His name is De Da Xiong. So it's De Da Xiong. And with an introduction by Ken Holm. And I'm sure a lot of you know who Ken Holm is. I really like this cooking book because it's not conventional like most of the cooking books. It actually introduced the Chinese kitchen and talks about and categorized by grains and staple foods, oil and liquid flavoring, seasoning, and then it goes into herbs and spices, vegetables, fruits and nuts. So it is extremely interesting. If you get a chance, and if you can find this, I would recommend this cooking book. As I say, I haven't used this for a very long time, but I was thinking, what am I gonna to make today to share with you? And I thought of this recipe. It's very easy, very simple. And I'm gonna make it my own style, um, but using his recipe as a guide. If you have this recipe book, it's on page 129. And the recipe itself is called Lion's Head is pork meatballs. I still don't really understand why it's called lion's head. From the explanation over here, the reason it's called lion's head is because the pork meatballs resemble the lion's head. And it's making use of Chinese cabbage, add into the dish, and the Chinese cabbage itself resembles the mane of the lion's head. So that's the reason why it's called lion's head. I'm just going to call it the pork meatballs with Chinese cabbage and rice vermicelli. My twist to this recipe of the Da Xiong. So let's get started. To make the pork meatballs, I'm using 500 grams of pork mince. I have rice vermicelli, which I have already cooked based on the instruction on the packet. Chinese cabbage, half of Chinese cabbage. The sauce, light soy, Chinese cooking wine, sesame oil. I'm gonna need some chicken stock to make the stock for the dish. 
other ingredients that I'm using two spring onions one ginger about two inches or two to three inches size one egg dried shrimps which I have soaked in water and dried shiitake mushrooms which I have soaked in water as well cornstarch about one tablespoon a little bit of uh, sugar and white pepper first thing I want to do is to get rid of the, uh, the bottom bit of the spring onions I'm gonna cut it in half and then I'm going to chop it up very finely Now, according to the recipe book, it says mix the chopped mushroom and shrimps with the minced pork, spring onions, ginger, soy, sugar, wine, and corn flour, and blend well and shape the mixture into four large meatballs. I'm going to do mine a little bit different. I'm going to make a medium sized meatballs, so I'm going to have more than four large meatballs. And for the light soy, it suggested two tablespoons. I think two tablespoons is correct. One and a half teaspoon of sugar. Now I think this is all to personal taste. I don't like my food to be too sweet because I'm pre-diabetic. So I'm just gonna use slightly less than one teaspoon. One tablespoon of rice wine. So I'm gonna use one tablespoon of rice wine one tablespoon of corn flour. I'm going to follow that as well. It didn't suggest to use any sesame oil. I'm going to use sesame oil. Um, suggested two spring onions, one to two. I'm using two. Only one teaspoon of chopped fresh ginger. I'm going to use more than one teaspoon because I like my meatball to have that zesty, a little bit of a spicy flavor from the ginger so i'm gonna add i love the flavor of the ginger so i'm gonna add a bit more ginger in my meatballs and also i'm gonna use sesame oil so let's start making the meatballs i have 500 grams of pork mince in the bowl i'm gonna add the shiitake mushrooms next i'm adding the dried shrimps so it's about three tablespoons of dried shrimps there finely chopped as you can see, I have more than one teaspoon of fresh ginger. This is about, about two tablespoons of ginger. Then I have my spring onions. It's roughly about two tablespoons as well. Now I have uh, a little bit of sugar and white pepper. The next thing I want to add is the light soy. Light soy is about two tablespoons. The Chinese cooking wine, one tablespoon. Now, I love sesame oil, and I think sesame oil will go very well in the meatballs. So I'm gonna add one tablespoon of sesame oil. One tablespoon of cornstarch. Now, the recipe book didn't suggest to add egg. I'm gonna add egg as well. Egg will help bind all the ingredients with the corn flour and make it more dense and compact. So I'm going to add one egg. With a clean hand, I'm going to bind all this together. Keep moving it in the same direction and press it down. It's almost like knitting a dough. This is what I'll do a little bit different from the recipe book as well. So the recipe book itself says that we'll make into four large meatballs. I'm going to make them into a small medium sized meatballs. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on a tray and put it in the oven preset at one 
20 degrees just to brown the outside before I cook it in the clay pot. The cornstarch with a little bit of water, mix it so your hand is a little bit wet to make the meatball. Look, it's so much prettier. My baking tray is full now. I have 12 pot meatballs over here. Now it's been three minutes. I'm gonna remove the pot balls from the oven. So the pot balls is lightly brown. So I didn't really want to fry it. And according to the recipe book, you don't have to do this. This is an optional extra step that I like to do. Add my ginger. Next, I'm gonna add some of the uh, Chinese cabbage. Add a little bit of chicken stock. Now I'm going to add the uh, pot balls. Now what I'm going to do next is add more chicken stock. And then I'm going to cover it up with a lid. I'm going to transfer this to the, the other stove. Because I still have some pot balls left, I'm going to heat up another clay pot. And what I'm going to do with this one, I'm going to add the chicken stock. And I'm going to add the remaining pot balls. Okay, still add a little bit more stock. And I'm going to cover with the lid. I'm just going to have a quick look. Okay, it's cooking away. There's enough room to add more cabbage. So I'm just going to add more cabbage into the uh, clay pot. I love the Chinese cabbage because it actually adds a little bit of sweetness into the broth. And also, it has a very nice, sweet, deli delicate flavor. So I'm going to close it again. Let's have a quick look at the other smaller clay pot. Ow! Ooh. Ooh, the lid is hot. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I I'm going to add one piece, one more piece of the Chinese cabbage. I'm going to skim off these impurities of the surface. This came from the pot balls. So that way we have a nice, clear stock. That looks pretty good. I'm going to make myself a small bowl to have a taste of the pot bowl with the rice vermicelli. First, I'm going to do, I'm going to add some of the rice vermicelli into this little bowl. Going to garnish with a little bit of chopped spring onions. Now I like mine a little bit spicy, just slightly. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to add a little bit of chili oil. There we have it. My pot balls with Chinese cabbage and rice vermicelli. Mini pot balls with Chinese cabbage, Chinese cabbage and rice vermicelli in a spicy broth of chili oil. Yeah, I'm going to try the pot meatballs. Very nice. <laughs> if I can say that, can I say that? It's actually very nice. It's succulent, it's juicy, it's very, very flavorsome with all the ingredients. Oh, and I have to say, the sesame oil makes a difference to the pot meatballs. It's, a, it's, it's moist and, uh, and that's not in the recipe book. So if you're going to make this recipe, I suggest to you try adding a little bit of sesame oil and let me know what you think about it. I love it. I think it's really nice. It's not too sweet. You can still taste a little bit of sweetness and it has a lot of ginger. I can taste the ginger. It's, it's beautiful. I really like it. I hope you like it too. I hope you like this video and that you will try it at home. Remember to subscribe and share with your friends. Until next week, my name is Victor Koo. Thanks for watching.